Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We are so pumped to be with you guys today. Are you ready for this, sweetheart? I'm ready. Man, we got a good segment for you guys today. We really want to talk about um, how to get results. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like there are so many people, they love God, but the results vary. I mean, they receive the word. They hear the word and we're reading the same Bible, but why does results vary so much? It's almost like you can preach the word, this person to get a breakthrough, this person gets nothing, this person gets a breakthrough, this person gets nothing. And I think there are principles. I don't know if you believe that or not. I think there are some things that we can do to get better results. You think so? Yeah, I think, you know, of course we go to the word of God. Uh -huh. I mean, but there are a lot of people who are praying and fasting and, and you know, confessing the word mm -hmm. and we're not getting the results. Mm -hmm. um, but there are things that we can do. The Bible's very clear mm -hmm. um, that we reap what we sow, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that if we ask, that it'll be given to us. So there's some very clear things that the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if the Bible says that and we're not producing results, there's mm -hmm. something, you know, we should examine in ourselves to say, okay, what do we need to do? And sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes you just have to, after you've done all, just Absolutely. stand. Absolutely. There are some times where it's just like God's developing patience, um, God's developing contentment mm -hmm. with where you are. I'm just saying out of my history of ministry, I'm noticing that results vary so much and I want to help people get better results. Yeah. Meaning that they should get some results from being saved and in the word and their marriage in their mental health, in their relationship with their kids, and hearing the voice of in so many areas, mm -hmm. I think that we can get some results. And so I'm excited to kind of share this with you. I kind of want to come out of Mark chapter four yep. today, which is the parable of the sower. If you're new to our broadcast, welcome. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to get the content when it's released. We're so excited just to build this online family that we're doing. So we read your comments. Um, please comment. Uh, write us a review if it's a good one. Let us know how what we're sharing is being a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk about how to get results today. And so Mark chapter four, let's just read it. Verse number 13. And I think I want to read verse tw through 20. Y'all listen to this. If you want results, you are listening to the right thing. You're watching the right show right now. Um, it says this in verse 14. Let's start there. It says that the sower sows the word. Mm. Then it says, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. When they hear the word immediately, they receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves. And so they endure for only a time afterward when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word immediately they stumble. Mm. Now, these are the ones sown on among thorns. They hear the word of God, but the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and it chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. But there are ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100. All right. This is a parable. And a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. This is Jesus basically explaining the parable of the sower to mm -hmm. his disciples. Um, I have some things that I'm thinking about, Mark, for. But what jumps out to you? Uh, I think first of all, what jumps out is I want to be the one that receives the hundredfold. Okay. <laughs> I want to be that kind of sower that when I sow. Yeah. And I think that, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I receive a hundredfold harvest uh -huh. because clearly, uh, you can <clears throat> be talking to, let's say church on a Sunday, right. you can be talking to a room full of hundreds of people uh -huh. and not everybody's hearing to the same capacity. Ooh. That's because um, now before Jesus even came into this, mm -hmm. this parable, he says, let he who has ears, let him hear. So what we found out is that not everyone who has physical ears actually can hear from God. Mm. And that should be celebrated. The fact that we get to hear. Yeah. But also you have to understand that not everybody's going to hear what you hear and see what you see. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just done. I'm completely retired from debating with people, especially people who do not know God or do not believe in God. Uh -huh. We don't see the same things. We don't hear the same things. And it is 100 percent fine because God has given me something that they don't have yet. Right. And so the scripture says, let he who has ears, let him hear. Mm. And so go ahead. What were you saying about that? Um, well, well, you know, I, I want to be that kind of person. I mean, it's so easy to say, yes, I'm the hundredfold here. Okay. But I would say, I mean, I'll speak for myself that there are different 
areas of my life that I may not be a hundredfold in. Okay. Maybe in the area of physical fitness and exercise, you know, I could be, I could have stony ground there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. But okay. in the area of, let's say, you know, being a mother, uh -huh. I could be hundredfold right there, hundredfold. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so I think that when we hear this parable uh -huh. to examine, not just overall, like, oh yes, I'm this kind of believer because mm -hmm. I have faith and therefore it's hundred. No, really look into Every the area? intimate uh -huh. areas of your life. Okay on your attitude, right. you know, might be the attitude with, with your spouse uh -huh. when you wake up in the morning mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe How's your spouse your is getting on your nerves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do you always got to mess with me when I wake up in the morning though, really? <laughs> no, you're wonderful. You're I, wonderful. I like, it's, I need Jesus first uh -huh. and then Ken. No, I thought you was gonna say and then coffee. <laughs> well, coffee, yeah. I scratched it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I want to talk to the person and I, I want to hear what you think about mm -hmm. this because I know that, you know, what I've noticed is that as believers, believers vary a lot in what they believe. Yeah. And some of it can be a little annoying because it's like, man, where'd you get that from? But at the same time, some of it's kind of to be expected mm -hmm. because we have an ancient manuscript and we all have different experiences and different backgrounds. So I think God gives us grace yes. to kind of grow and we're all growing. So it's not like any of us have arrived. So it's basically everybody is speaking out of a glass that's somewhat... Um, what does the scripture say? Um, now you see dimly, but then you'll see him face to face. And we're all have to give each other enough grace yes. to realize that we're all speaking from not a full context. And that's actually OK mm -hmm. as we grow towards Jesus. But I know that there is somebody who would just say, well, um, w why is my Christianity about me getting results? Mm -hmm. It's almost like how to get results. OK, here we go with success, preaching or self-help. Now, hold on now. The Bible is supposed to help you yeah. in every area of your yeah. life, spiritually, soulishly, physically, financially. There are principles from the word of God. And we have to accept the fact that, listen, when I accept Jesus, it's not just for eternity. Mm -hmm. um, there are eternal benefits, but there are some things in my life that he wants to clean up and bless and do something with me on today. Absolutely. So, But here's the thing. Getting results do matter. There's many reasons why, you know, I'd love to hear what you think. To me, it matters because you will know a tree by its fruit. Mm. The scripture talks about how when we're fruitful, we, we glorify God. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about fruitful, I'm talking about fruitful spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, across all boards. Um, it says that herein is my father glorified that you produce much fruit. Mm. So, you know, whether we like the way it sounds or not, God kind of wants us to take his word and live in a way where we do get some results. Wow. It, it's not like God is like, you know what? I went to the cross and it was just for you to escape hell. It's like, no, I went to the cross and I've also came that you might have an, a life and have it more abundantly. I want you to have healing. I want you to have deliverance. I want you to have victory. I want you to have promotion. I want you to have success because all of that is in the book. But there are some who will hear that and be like, well, results don't really matter. I would actually say the opposite that we should be some of the most, not results driven, like I'm not driven for results, I'm driven to know him better and serve him more faithfully. But as you drive your life towards Jesus, he changes everything mm -hmm. else and he actually makes it better. You believe that? Yes, I mm -hmm. believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I really mm -hmm. don't honestly pay attention to what people have to say yeah. that are negative thoughts. Yeah. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't have time for it. But you know, when I look at the Bible, uh -huh. the pure heart and uh -huh. just see, I mean, I see the life of Jesus. Uh -huh. He had a very fruitful life. Right. He <laughs> produced results. Right. The greatest result of mm -hmm. all is, you know, dying, paying the price for mm -hmm. our sin, mm -hmm. for our sickness and disease, giving us a way to eternal life with the father. Mm -hmm. That's the most that's the greatest result anyone in the history of earth has ever achieved. Right. So I think if we're going to be Christ followers, we need to be results. Be yeah, it would be okay, okay with, results. with allowing his word to change me to where we do get better results. Absolutely. All right. Now let's, let's, um, here's a thought. You can take it or leave it. And this is really speculative. It's almost like just my opinion, but I've been in ministry for two decades and I've met thousands of Christians around the world and have crazy conversations does not mean that I know everybody, but mm -hmm. from what I've seen, just take it or leave it. Here it is. I, my conclusion is that 75% <clears throat> 
of most believers, Mm -hmm. people I'm talking about sitting in church that confess Jesus, 75% of them, they get the word of God, but then they have no results. 75% when they hear the word, they actually have no results. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. My opinion from what I've seen is that 25% of believers in church that love Jesus, they bear fruit. Some of them bear 30, Mm -hmm. some of them bear 60, and then some of the 25%, a very small group produces a hundredfold. Here's the challenge. I believe that the word of God is a hundredfold seed. Yes. And I believe that a hundredfold seed should always produce a hundredfold results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Meaning that inside of the good word of God, there is enough power. The the DNA of the hundredfold word is that when it's sown into the good ground, that it will produce a hundredfold. Okay. So there's a real problem because 75% of people are hearing great messages, listening to podcasts, studying the word of God and getting no results, Mm -hmm. no results in their body, in their health, in their marriage. Okay. Some people are getting some results, but few people are getting a hundredfold results. There's a problem. There's a problem because it's a hundredfold word. It's Mm -hmm. supposed to get a hundredfold results. Here's why the problem is not in the seed. The problem's in the soil. Yeah. Let me say it again. The problem is not in the seed, sweetie. The problem is in the soil. Mm -hmm. There is no problem with the word of God. The word of God is powerful. Jesus was the word made flesh. It will heal you, set you free and deliver you. That's why the devil don't want you in your Bible. It's a hundredfold seed. The problem is not the seed. The problem is the soil. Mm -hmm. So what Mark chapter four is talking about is the four different kind of hearers. Mm hmm. Or the four different kind of hearts. You can put those things together um, because what you hear affects your heart. Um, But what it's talking about is the wayside, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and the good ground Mm -hmm. are four kinds of soil temperatures. So Uh every person, when we hear the word, Uh the word is the seed. But the seed is sown not in our ears, not in our brain, Mm -hmm. not like just somewhere in our bodies it's the so the the seed is sown in our hearts yeah. and so depending on the condition of our heart uh-huh. depends on the type of fruit we will produce yeah and let's be truthful about the heart we're not talking about the heart that pumps the blood because many times we talk mm-hmm. about heart and we kind of point here mm-hmm. we're talking about your spirit mm-hmm. so the word is sowed in your spirit where jesus is where faith is amen okay and so now what you hear does affect what's in your heart mm-hmm what you hear affects. So what this, what it says is that faith comes by hearing. And so the more you hear the word of God, that you are an overcomer, that you are the head and not the tail above only and never beneath that will cause you to believe that. Mm. But if you go out, okay. And you hear the words of skepticism and that the Bible has been changed and that you cannot trust Jesus and that you need to trust yourself. Well, then that will be what's in your heart and whatever's in, in the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so basically it's this thing that's working. What's going in your ear is affecting your heart. What's in your heart is coming out of your mouth. What's coming out of your mouth is coming into your life. And that's why the scripture takes it all the way back. And it says, guard your heart above everything else. Above everything else. For out of it flows the issues of life. What sticks out to you? But that's so good. So now I want to be careful about mm. what goes into my heart. Right. And what well well the, the word of God, uh-huh. of course. I want to sow the word of God in my heart. But now I want to produce the hundredfold. Right. How do I produce the hundredfold? Okay. And not Yes. And not okay. So all right. So when I say a hundredfold, mm-hmm. let's kind of redefine it. Mm-hmm. Let's not just be like hundred times as much as what was sown. Okay. Let's define it as the optimum maximum amount of return or results. Good. Okay. I'll so when that. we talk about the hundredfold, so the hundredfold um, seed uh-huh. should always produce optimum maximum results. Optimum maximum results. Yes. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. So when I am sowing the seed, let's say our marriage is in trouble, mm-hmm. but I start um, really studying the scripture and I found out how husband love his wife, like Christ loved the church. We submit, you know, mm-hmm. one to another, all of this stuff. It is a hundred fold seed that should produce hundred fold mm-hmm. results based upon the kind of soil. Yes. Okay. Now we, we, we're going to talk about how w- these kinds of soils, mm-hmm. um, but I think that so we got to say that's that's the power that's in the word. But we have to identify what kind of soil we happen to be. Mm. All right. So the first one is what's called wayside wayside. All right. The wayside soil or ground 
is the person who hears the word of God, but immediately Satan comes and steals the word that's been sown. Mm. Okay. And so that's like throwing seed out on cement, seed on asphalt. It doesn't even go into the ground. It mm -hmm. can never produce a harvest. It's called seed by the wayside. Mm -hmm. OK, and this is the person that's, uh, you know, they come to church and even before they get to the parking lot, they're offended yep. that before they get to the parking lot, they angry. They angry because of a song, a creative moment that we did. Mm -hmm. Basically, they are allowing Satan to steal the word. The word comes. The word is stolen. The word comes. The word is stolen. The word comes. The word is stolen. And there are so many people that live their life right there. They're so, wayside. True. Mm -hmm. so there's l examples of, you know, like I could be like, OK, God, I came to church. I heard this word on um, having the peace of God, mm -hmm. having the joy of God. And so I've been stressed out right. and uptight about everything. I'm just not I'm not going to argue with my kids. I'm not going to argue with my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get mad in traffic. And then you go home, man. Boom. There it is. Uh -huh. That's the wayside. Yeah. And you let that thing get stolen from you. All right. We want to help you. All right. Number two is what we call what? Rocky places. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the person who hears the word of God. <clears throat> and the Bible says that because of tribulation, which is trouble and persecution arises for the word's sake, mm -hmm. they have no root in themselves. So they only endure for a time. Mm -hmm. But then they end up falling away. So because they don't have roots in themselves. Yeah. Go ahead, talk about that one. You know, and, and I've seen this happen a couple of times in mm -hmm. our personal lives where we see people and uh, family members, close friends, they're so on fire for God. They get saved, mm -hmm. they get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they are on fire for, for a three few months. weeks. <laughs> okay, a little bit or of time. Or for a year, yeah. or for two years. But they go home, I've seen people <laughs> go home and they tell to their, they, they talk to their mothers, especially young kids, you yeah, know, they go home and they that. talk to their parents and their uh -huh. parents say, Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know about that. I don't believe in that. Hmm. And, um, I know one, oh. one gentleman in particular, in particular, a young man, mm -hmm. we gave him the word and he was so excited, but he would go home mm -hmm. and I called him at home and they, and his words back to me were, you know what, but you know, my, my mom's, you know, laughing at me. Dad's making fun of me because I have my Bible and I'm reading my Bible. Like mm -hmm. these are mm -hmm. the, this is the rocky ground right. where you just didn't have enough faith or enough strength or, you know, enough the people roots. around you enough roots. Yeah. It, what it didn't give it, mm -hmm. you didn't allow the word enough time to take root, but the enemy uses persecution. Mm -hmm. So it's people saying, Oh, you're in a cult. Oh, you mm -hmm. think you're a holy roller or you think you're everything you, you've changed and mm -hmm. all of those things is better. Basically, your light is now putting a spotlight on their darkness. You have to yeah. when it comes to persecution, I've learned you have to ignore it and outlast it. People who talk about you today will follow you on tomorrow. Yeah. But most people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that the persecution they get from so-called family and friends yeah. is not for you to go the other way. It's actually for you to say, oh, I must be going God's way. Let me keep that up. Absolutely. So they allow the trouble that they experience. And I know there's somebody who's watching this mm -hmm. that has a storm and you are in trouble. Don't run from God. Run to God. Run to God. And you have to allow yourself to stay in this environment. Because environments matter mm -hmm. where you are developing a root system. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully you can get the word and it can take root to where the roots are so deep that no matter what storm comes in your life, it's like a tree. The storm might blow, but it's not going to blow you over because you are set it in. You're set in the house of God. You're deep rooted. Mm -hmm. And so what we're looking to do is raise up people that don't just serve Jesus like crazy for five months, but for 50 years. Come on. It's not about how you start. It's really about how you finish. Right. But that's what we call stony ground. Hard. Yep. Anything else on that one? Um, I would just <clears throat> say that, you know, in order to grow roots, you just got to stay at it. Yeah. You have to stay where you're being fed. Yeah. And so sometimes the tribulations and the trials can come and your friends and family can say, oh, you know, laugh at you or whatever. But you got to keep going back to the brook that you're being fed. Keep going mm -hmm. back to church. Keep reading your word because the eventually those roots are going to those roots are going to grow uh -huh. and you're going to become <laughs> so strong. Nobody's going to be able to to knock you off of it. Amen. The third kind of ground is called um, thorny ground okay and the scripture says it this way that the cares of this world and the desires or the lust for other things enter in mm. and it chokes the word mm. you know it's like MMA um, fighter 
<laughs> mixed martial arts and it just makes them tap out. It's like wow. they just start caring about other things. And this is the person who comes in and it's like the cares of this world, just whatever's happening in the economy, what's ever happening in mm. um, uh, you know, social uh, injustices, or the cares of this world, the cares of what's happening at work, mm -hmm. um, the desire for other things, the lust for other things. It's like they want to work a second job or a third job or a fourth job. One of the greatest lies to this generation is that you need to be about your grind. No, I need to be about his grace. Amen. Like I do have to work hard and there are things that I need to do. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm not going to work myself to the place where I'm getting ahead of God. And there are some things that I have to learn contentment and that God is my provider, mm -hmm. not my my degree, not my education, but ultimately God is my provider. And so there's so many people that they have thorny ground because the cares of this world, like, you know what, I need to pay these bills or the deceitfulness of riches. I need to go and I need to get me a Tesla or a new home or I need more square footage or I need a new iPhone. And they need all these other things, but they don't accurately hear the voice of God. And it chokes the word. The devil got him tapping out. Mm -hmm. I, you know, let go of that word. Let go of that word. Oh, my goodness. And they become unfruitful. Anything on that? That is so good. I think that this might be the biggest place for believers. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest place because you could be in <laughs> church for years. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. get comfortable off yeah. the word, get fat off of the word. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of people be in church and they come in church for years and <laughs> they came in church, their marriage was crazy. Right. They didn't have a job. Now right. their business is booming. They have three kids and they're blessed. And now all of a sudden they don't need God anymore. Yeah, they, 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 they might come once a month. They might come for special holidays. Mm -hmm. But they don't have that fervency and that power because that 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 fervency or that because they got all their needs met. So yeah. it's almost like they're using God mm -hmm. to get where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to leave them for what they really want. Mm. And that was the worst part. You know, back in the day, I used to teach a lot of principles about success and um, things like that, because God taught me success principles when I was a businessman to basically that's why our marriage was headed for divorce and now we're best friends and mm -hmm. we were in a place where we owed a, over a hundred thousand dollars of debt and then you know God blessed us to the place where we was able to give over a hundred thousand dollars in one year mm -hmm. um, and I, I love to share principles but what I noticed that the more and more of those kind of principles I share it attracts people that are really just using God like a magician mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's almost like I'm going to work this word to get my marriage better, to get my mind right, and to get my money right. But then after I get there, I'm going to go and do something else to mm -hmm. get more of what I want. Mm -hmm. And that is not the gospel. That is not why we come to Jesus. And so now I try to teach people, will you serve God even if he don't do one more thing for you? Mm -hmm. Meaning that he's already done enough for you. So if God did nothing for me, I'm still going to fast. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to tithe. I'm still going to give. I'm still going to live holy. If he does nothing for me because mm -hmm. of everything he's already done on the cross, right. that is a whole different setting. And I just don't want um, our friends who's a part of our audience. And there are success principles all through the word of God. There are certain things that if you do this, you'll eat the good of the land. If you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you knock, it shall be open. He will load you daily with benefits. He gives you the power to get wealth. I mean, I can go on of all of the promises mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. but I don't want you just serving God to use him to use him like you would use drugs until you get your fix and then you own to the next drug. Wow. That is not a healthy relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. And I think that there are many people, not everybody, but many people are there and they don't even know that they're there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've seen. 20 years of ministry. Yeah. We've seen people come and for five years be the most faithful person until they get success or they get some um, get prosperous or they get where they wanted to go. And it's like, okay, well, what happened to so-and-so? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're back just doing what they, they kind of come, they kind of do this. They kind of serve God. They kind of not, I don't know anything else that you would speak to that. How do we help people with that? What, oh, what do you say to that? I mean, I think it's, it's, again, we're talking about this, the soil that the, so, the word is the being sown into. It's about the heart and it's about guarding your heart yeah. and protecting your heart and um, keeping Jesus in the center of it. Yeah. And it's like you said, if you, you know, if God never did another thing for me, I would still love him and I would still serve him. It's easier said than done, uh -huh. you know, but it has to be the position of your heart. That has to be my starting blocks. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. has to be our foundation. It's it's almost like I know children mm-hmm. um, when they're born, mm-hmm. uh, they love their mother and dad. Mm-hmm. Their mom and dad could be abusive. They could be the worst mother and father in the world. Mm-hmm. Some children, a lot of kids, I know, n- never even met their father. He's right. just gone. But they still have this inner love, this right. le- this yearning for their father. And I think we have to know that when we become born again and adopted into the family of God, He is our father. Yeah. And so we have to teach our hearts and spend enough time with him, excuse me, spend enough time with him where we would get, we begin to yearn for him just like we would our natural mother or father where mm. he could be the worst heavenly father ever, but you still want him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank God he's the best that we could ever, <laughs> we can't even say how good he is, but oh, we have yeah. to, we just have to spend enough time with him yeah. to where we want him regardless. Okay. Y'all ready for the answer? Come on. Okay, so how do you get results? You get results in the kingdom of God by having a pure heart. Mm. That's basically what this is about. And I want to talk to the people who are here, our friends. um, Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I want you to start to put a premium on having a pure heart. Yeah. A clean heart. um, The right kind of heart. You know, my pastor's favorite scripture back in the day is Matthew. I think it's 5, 8. Blessed Mm -hmm. are the pure in heart for they Mm -hmm. shall see God. And I believe there's so many people that do not see God mm. because the ground of their heart is not yet purified. You know, I realize as a person of influence, the more I grow, there's temptation here and there's temptation of there. And it's almost like a daily thing. I would overstate if it if I said it was a daily thing, but that's how consistent it feels like. I'm like, God, give me a clean heart. Amen. God, let my heart be right. Mm-hmm. My heart. I want my heart to be right with you. Yes. I want my heart to be right before his people. I want my heart to be right when it comes to God, when it comes to stewardship of finances and resources, I just want a heart, a heart, my heart to be right. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm so attracted to David in the Bible. Yeah. You know, I'm always leaning towards David and David wasn't a perfect man, but the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. heart. And there's just something about, and I don't even know how to teach it. Maybe you can help me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, because what we do here at doing life with Ken and Tabitha it's almost like mentorship. Mm-hmm. Even if we don't know our audience, we're invested into yeah. your marriages, your business, your calling. Mm-hmm. And this is a form of mentorship. We're not eating, we're not stopping at Starbucks and asking about your day, but we pray for our audience and we say, what do we need to do to bring them value? Mm-hmm. And my hope as your mentor, or as a mentor in your life would be that I could just shine a light on some, some things that we can do to be pure hearted. Mm just to have the kind of heart yeah. that God would want to write. Like when he spoke of David, there was just something about the inner workings of David. And, you know, I don't know. I know I see that in you. Mm. I see someone who was born and raised in the projects, was used and abused physically, sexually, verbally. And I remember even when we met, you know, some of y'all, this is a long time ago, but my wife, I've never heard her use one cuss word ever. Okay, she's probably heard me use one because I got mad with her like 20 years ago. You remember that one? I don't. She don't even remember that. that Okay, but one of the things that I really liked about my wife is that she didn't cuss. I never met another woman that I that didn't cuss, and I wasn't a big cusser. So when I met her, I was like, "Man, that's amazing! You're Mm -hmm. just different." And I don't know. That was before you even knew Jesus. You was unsaved, but there was something about you that was pure, Mm -hmm. and something about you that was different. And after you met Jesus. And now you're 47. So that was at 24 years old, I think. Okay. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. I've never seen you backslide. I've never seen you go back. It's not saying that you've been a perfect woman. Right. But I've always seen you progress towards God. And a lot of that is because you've just maintained a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen you overcome cancer when some people would get bitter and angry at God. Mm -hmm. I've seen it still purify your heart. I've seen family members not understand you and a uh, almost almost like abuse you or neglect you or act like, you know, you're not even there. But I've still seen you love them anyway mm-hmm. and forgive them and pray for them yeah. and keep your heart pure. I've seen you go through things where you believed God for this and you didn't get nowhere close to that. You got the opposite, <laughs> but still keep your heart pure. <sighs> How? You're, you're speaking to my heart right now, moving <laughs> my heart. Um, mm. You know, I, as you were speaking I think the thing that I think about the most is with a pure heart, it, you just can't, you had to throw pride out the window. Mm. 
Like you just can't have any pride in your mm. heart. And I'm not saying I don't have pride in my heart. I try my best not to. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to just wanting the best for people and loving people and just turning the other cheek and all of that, it's just like, you know what? I don't have anything to lose. Right. Like, okay, I'm all from the projects, you know, like used and abused, like all this stuff, like every, there's so many things that have happened to me. Like, I don't have any pride, you know, like, you don't have nothing to I'm prove not puffed nothing up to lose. here. Yeah. Like everything that you see, it's because God has done a great work in me. Yeah. I'm so, I don't believe that I would be alive. Mm -hmm if it had not been for the grace of God, mm -hmm. for Jesus coming into my life and mm -hmm. changing my world, I would not be alive today. So I don't have any shame in that, mm -hmm. nothing to prove, no pride in that. So anything, like if you talk bad about me or you say any, like anything, it's just like, well, I mean, all glory goes to Jesus. Like mm -hmm. everything I do, I'm just really trying to do it for the Lord. I remember the person that I used to be mm -hmm. and I know who I am now. Now I know that there are a lot of people out there who are where I used to be. Mm -hmm. And there were people fighting for me. There were people praying for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just want to be one of those people fighting for the Tabithas out there. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. My heart is there. Mm -hmm. My right. heart is like, okay, there's no pride here. I'm going to do what I have to do. W what else would you tell someone? Do, do you have anything else that you could just like, if there's somebody, let's say another woman, and mm -hmm. let's say she's your age, let's say she's a little bit older, young, whatever. And she's just like, but how practically do I have a pure heart or keep a pure heart? Is there anything mm -hmm. else that comes to mind with that? Um, I would say practically you have to just move on what you believe. Uh -huh. Like if you believe in your heart, mm -hmm. you feel it in your gut, mm -hmm. um, you do what you what you know that you should do. Mm -hmm. So when I go to sleep at night, I lay down on my pillow mm -hmm. and I think about my day mm -hmm. or think about my tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I need to be okay with me. Okay. Before I'm even, if, I think that God would be okay with me more mm -hmm. than I would be okay with me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, okay, I know God is loving. He forgives me and everything, but Tabitha are, are you okay with the decisions that you made today? Okay. Are you true to yourself? Right. Okay. Are you true to the God in you? And I think that's how you live wow. with your heart. There is so much that is running through my mind right mm -hmm. now. I'm going to just throw out some. I hope I can remember them. I hear that scripture that says, um, to the pure, all things are pure. Yeah. And to the unpure, all things are unpure. And I do realize that when we have these conversations, that some people see the purity and they think that maybe it's a um, act or a show. Mm -hmm. And I would remind you of the scripture because to the unpure, all things are unpure mm. and to the pure, all things are pure. Once again, that is putting a flashlight or a spotlight on the condition of a person's heart that sticks out to me. Number two, you said something about humility and pride. I want to do a whole teaching on humility because mm -hmm. it's the one thing that nowadays I feel like is missing the most. And it's one of the most important things for us to have. Yeah. Pride is on the rise. And the reason that some people's marriage is jacked up is because they're too prideful to go in for counseling or they're too prideful to apologize or they're too prideful to admit that they've been wrong. It, just pride. Mm. And the scripture says like this, that when you lift yourself up and you're prideful, God is going to bring you low. But to the humble, he'll lift them up. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people that are trying to lift themselves up and people would rather nowadays be discovered than developed. Mm -hmm. They would rather have a strong social media following and a million people than have character, integrity and a pure heart towards God. And we have our priorities that mm -hmm. are flipped. And so for me, we need a humility movement. Yeah. We need to raise up people that are teachable, people that are pliable, people that are life learners. Much of what I see even happening on social media is the spirit of pride. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to Christian debating another Christian. Christians calling other Christians certain names. Well, you don't know this and you're false this and you're all of that is backed by the spirit of pride. I know better than you know. My denomination is better than your denomination. My pastor is better than your pastor. It's all the spirit of pride. It's actually exactly what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven because he I want to be this and I want to be that. And he was brought low because and the reason that pride is so high is because we live in an information age. Come on. And the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. So now we're so inundated with information. We are the smartest generation that has ever existed, but we are also the most depressed and sad generation. Mm. And we are the furthest from God. We are so smart that we're dumb mm. because <laughs> that pride, is so true. <laughs> pride comes before the fall. 
And there are so many people falling in their marriage, falling in their calling, falling in their anointing. I'm, I'm telling you, people don't, they're so prideful, they don't even know how to believe the word. It's written over a span of 1,500 years, I believe, by 40 different authors, all prophesying something that would be completely impossible for it all to come together. And people in their pride will tell you, well, I can come to God like this and however I want. <laughs> and, you know, if that's what, what it means to serve God, I'd rather just go to hell. That's all pride. Yikes. That's all pride. So that sticks out to me. But then I guess we got to come right back to the context, which the context in which we're talking about is having a pure heart. And so Mark chapter four ends with this person who has good ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and basically it says, and then it's a person who has good ground and they'll bring forth 30, 60 and some will bring forth a hundred. Mm. My point is this, that a hundred fold seed of the word should all produce a hundred fold return. The problem is not the seed, it's the soil. It's the condition of our heart. And my hope for somebody who's watching this is saying, God, give me a humble heart. Mm. God, give me a pliable heart. God, give me a pure heart. Give me clean hands and a right heart. That's our heart. Mm. And that's what we want for our audience because I believe that in when the seed is sown in that kind of soil, you'll always get results. Mm. They might vary, they might be 30, they might be 60, they might be 100. But thank God it ain't nothing. I love it. <laughs> but that's how, you know, God is so good because if the ground is good, you're at least getting 30. I'm at least getting 30. You know what I'm saying? saying? I'm spending all this time in church. I'll take 30. <laughs> yeah. But it's we're supposed to get 100. Right. And I think it has to do with us toiling the ground. Mm-hmm. It has to do with us getting out the weed seed mm-hmm. attitudes, getting out of competition and bigotry and hatred and unbelief and fear and, and saying, God, give me a pure heart. Mm-hmm. So I'll end with just a few keys for a person, just to be super practical for a person who says, Pastor Ken and Tabitha, I want to have a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Here's three things you can do. Number one, you got to guard your ear gate Mm. because what's going in the ear is affecting what you believe. Yes. All right. It does matter what music you listen to. Yes. It's not just, it's not the beat. The beat is immoral. It's neither good or bad. It matters what music your kids listen to. Listen, but there are lyrics that is coming in under the beat Mm -hmm. and those lyrics. Mm -hmm. They have a spirit. Jesus said it this way. My words are spirit and life. So if Jesus's words are spirit and life, some people's words are flesh and death. And you have to be able to call a spade a spade. Like I'm not going to allow you to sow. It's my job to guard my heart above all else. What movies I watch are important. I'm not just being entertained. I'm being influenced. What news media I watch is important Mm -hmm. because what goes in the ear affects the heart. Number two, my second key would be this to survey your relationships because I've learned that every human being is a carrier of seed, Mm. meaning that every human being has the seed of their words. And whenever you hang out with somebody, you are exchanging words, meaning that their thoughts are being sown into your ear gate, into your heart. So what they think about politics, what they think about the economy, what they think about the church, what they think about men and women of God, if it is not right, you have to guard your inner circle. And here's the thing. Every person in your life does four things. They either add to you, multiply you, divide you, or subtract from you. And you need to go through every relationship you have and say, does this person add to me, multiply me, subtract from me, or divide from me? Mm -hmm. And you need to remove the people that subtract and divide and spend your time with those who add and multiply. And number three, would be this invest in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what church you go to does matter. What you listen to the preaching of the word, it does matter. And not every conference is a conference that you're supposed to be at. Not every well is a, a well you're supposed to drink from. Not every stream you're supposed to be sipping from. You got to figure out where God's placed you in the body. And then you have to invest in your spirit. And I see you do this all the time, spending time in the word, listening to the word, spending time in a small group, spending time with other believers that have the word of God. And when you do those things, they will help fortify Mm. the ground of your heart so that you can have the heart God wants you to have. So good. Anything else, sweetheart? No, I love it. Man, I hope you guys enjoy this. Mm. I think this was really rich. I think that this is one of those segments that you want to listen to a few times. Absolutely. And then kind of take it to God. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it um, has been um, our opinions and our experience, but there's so much truth kind of wrapped in what we were talking about that you can take this, take your notes and say, God, 
How does this apply to me? And start to ask God for a humble heart and a pure heart towards every relationship, towards your spiritual leadership, to people that you work with, and watch yourself get some results. Come on. I want to pray for those of you all who are watching. We love you guys, and we just pray that when the word of God is coming your way, that you are about to get some amazing results. I believe that God will even cut and purge a tree to bring forth more rich and more mm. excellent fruit or more rich and more excellent results. I believe that your results actually bring glory to God. And so we just pray in Jesus name that you're about to see some major results financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically, as you apply the good word of God to your life. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in to doing life with Ken and Tabitha today. I pray that you really enjoyed this segment. We would love for you to be the first to grab the content when it comes out. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button right now. Share this message with a friend. We love to hear back from you. There's an email address that's in the show notes. Um, if you're a podcast, Podcaster, if you are a YouTuber, wherever you are, we love to create a community just sharing our goods and our bads so that you can grow closer to God and also closer to the people that God has placed in your life. We look forward to seeing you again right here real soon. We love you guys and uh, we'll see you. Peace.